Okay, and welcome back. It's hour three, and time to spend a little bit of uh, our mental processes with Joel Skousen, the editor-in-chief of World Affairs Brief. This is your weekly, bi-weekly, well, it's twice a month, World Affairs Brief, a glimpse. Uh, we're going to tell you how to get a free copy of this newsletter. Uh, Joel and I have shared uh, views which don't always mesh, but they are always interesting for years and years. Uh, he has uh, one view of uh, Russia and Vladimir Putin. I have another. That doesn't mean we can't share uh, really wonderful discourse and meaningful uh, discussion, which we do. And we invite all of you to make your own decisions and think about things. Get World Affairs Brief. Get, get the free copy, at least. And read some of the wonderful in-depth research that Joel puts together every week for you. Hello, my friend, and welcome back. Well, thank you, Jeff. Um, I didn't realize we really have a different point of view on uh, Vladimir Putin. Uh, I view him as an enemy. Are you telling me you view him as a friend? I view him as a friend of his people and a friend, basically, who is uh, not adversely positioned to allowing the rest of the world to live and let live. Well, of course, you know, I've been expounding extensively on your program over the past decade about how the fall of the Soviet Union was a carefully crafted decision. We know that was and a farce. We agree on that 100%. But what I'm saying is that how can you come to the conclusion that Vladimir Putin suddenly, as the KGB follow-on to the Yeltsin uh, well, charade, I can, I can uh, answer you know, that. Is, is, an, yeah. is an honest you know, broker for his people. I can answer that. Even the Russians would disagree. Yeah. Well, I can answer that. And the best way to answer it, I think, is that he has an 80-plus percent popularity approval rating among a populace that is fairly well-educated and fairly smart. They're, Americans, I think, are falling behind. But more than that, I have watched, I have read, I have listened to him speak and how he constructs his words and his sentences. I don't find them bellicose. I don't find them threatening. Uh, I find them logical and pragmatic, as can be in the face of uh, a lot of things that really don't need to be going on right now, such as the NATO buildup and the, and the threats against uh, Russia and eventually against China. But uh, that's okay. It's, it's just fine. It's okay. Well, but, you know, rhetoric is one thing. You know, you, you certainly don't trust any of the Western leaders' rhetoric. Uh, we look to the I actions. Certainly, I certainly don't. And, and Putin's actions are totally aggressive in terms of remilitarization. I mean, there's no doubt he's preparing. Well, is it, is it remilitarization, or is it uh, something to do with trying to make one safe in a very dangerous world. We're disarming, he's arming. They've never stopped doing r and I'd be the first to say that. Uh, they have some extraordinary weapon systems. Well, we have less and less and fewer and fewer ships, submarines, planes. Uh, One-third of our air force is almost perennially grounded. But you certainly don't believe that the U.S. is less aggressive because of the appearance of disarmament. I think the uh, the U.S. is not being run by people in the U.S. I think there are string pullers, uh, George Soros types and others, who are working an agenda that would really have very little in common with either one of us. Well, absolutely true. I mean, these are what we call the globalists. And there That's is a, right. a conspiracy to take away liberty. That's and, right. of course, you know, Putin has his own version of the New World Order that he wants to run, and it's going to be very tyrannical, just like the globalists, and so is China. So, you know, I do... Can you have a leader of a large company or a country, either way, this is said to be a corporatocracy, who isn't tyrannical? Can you have someone who's really uh, a, a pacif pacific... Uh, uh, someone who is uh, gentle and kind? I don't know. I, I really don't know. Well, theoretically you could, but in today's world of multiple conspiring, uh, you know, powers against liberty, uh, you know, and clearly, you know, if, if you've got to remember that Putin is the follow-on to the biggest deception in world history. The very biggest deception is the phony fall of the, uh, the Soviet Union. Boy, they looted it. I remember that one day they flew out 500 tons of gold in one day. Yeah, it was. But, I mean, Putin is the follow-on. He is the the soft appearance of the spear. I understand what you're saying, thoroughly. The West. I thoroughly and understand. It's very yeah. important not to be deceived about right. 
the the rhetoric or the appearance of Peter. Mm-hmm. Remember, the reason Putin is popular is because he the West has handed him the excuse to hate mm-hmm. the West. Mm-hmm. He's used it. The Russians, of course, want to go back to the glory days when they were the powerful people. He's reestablishing Russian hegemony. Mm-hmm. That's why he supports them. That's not an intelligent position. It is a hearkening back to old traditions of the old Soviet power days. What should we do about this, Joel? What What can we, what should we be doing that we're not? Well, in the first place, the West has been allowing, uh, you know, transfer of military technology both to China and Russia ever since, you know, <laughs> World War II. They never even stopped after after Lend-Lease. And, uh, but this is a globalist agenda to build two major enemies to have a third world war. Uh, Putin will turn out to be the one, uh, you know, with China that attacks the West. And, uh, you know, you won't be able to maintain the you know, resident uh, helper of the Russian people, mm-hmm. you know, when he, when he strikes the world. Now, mm-hmm. you may well say, because there is an awful lot of, of apparent justification of the West provoking mm-hmm. and instigating, and of course they are provoking and instigating, uh, but it's in a very sophisticated way so that they can get Russia and China to strike. They know they want to strike. They know that they are afraid to strike. They you know, know the U.S. has a lot of secret weapon systems, mm-hmm. um, despite their disarmament. Uh, and uh, but it has to be you know a Russian and Chinese strike that our globalist thing and then come out in their defensive posture and say oh we didn't know this was going to happen and you know and, and march everybody into a militarized global government in response to this but everything that's happening in the world stage and I must repeat this paradigm because it's extremely mm-hmm. important for your listeners but everything that's happening mm-hmm. from the Western political domestic and foreign policy is meant to create the atmosphere for the West to be attacked. They're inviting mm-hmm. it, they're provoking it, mm-hmm. they're being permissive, they're playing the whole game. I mean, mm-hmm. it isn't mm-hmm. one pattern. Permissiveness is part of the game. Transfer, denying uh, that you're transferring, and then doing it under the table. All of this, every policy is on the table. But if you look at the big picture, it's to eventually bring a World War Three upon this world horrific enough to drive and stampede everyone into a global new world, which they're now resisting. And look at the resistance to the trade pact. Right. And it's a globalist deal. Look at the resistance to the EU expansion and things. And they're having to work overtime to subvert the British people to keep them from voting themselves out of the EU. I mean, this is a massive agenda mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, here in the United States. But you know, on the same, as much as you and I both hate this globalist deception oh, agenda. we yeah. must never forget that Russia and China are are predators in their own sense, and they're going to attack the West someday. And so we really have to, in my opinion... You know, would, would, uh, like Joel, uh, would, they, would they rather buy up uh, the United States than destroy it? Chinese... It, no, no. The Chinese, you remember, if you look at Chinese history, they have a superiority complex. Yeah. They, they felt very, very offended that the West has ruled over them for so many years. They yeah. have a, a grudge match. And they, I, don't the they include and, the Japanese in the West, oh, too? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. A special grudge match to the yeah. Japanese. Yeah. But, you know, the Oriental mind is a fairly ruthless one in terms of humanity. It's true. Um, and, read I mean, World War II. Read, yes, study World, read World War II. II. What happens with the prison camps and with yeah. the Vietnamese, whether it's Japanese or Chinese, the horrific tortures make Abu Ghraib look like a, a plaything. Right. Uh, but the, I'm not justifying Abu Ghraib. I'm just saying it's much, much worse. That's a very good in point. The, in the order. But, you know, you can't see in America ever a video like you see in China where a, a busy little alley, people walking down both sides of the alley, a little child gets run over by a truck, and nobody stops to pick up or help or assist the child to get it out of the street. It keeps getting run over. I mean, just walk on. That is something you've never seen in a Western culture. Now, perhaps in war, when people are fleeing you know, from the Russians, you would see they wouldn't necessarily stop. But I mean, in a normal shopping day, 
no one would stop to rescue a child just run over by a truck in an alley, which is packed with people. Mm -hmm. Incredible. And I'm just saying, this isn't a condemnation of all the Orient. I'm just saying that there is a, a carelessness about humanity that comes from having billions of people stacked together where you, you have no, uh, it's, it's hard to care or have a, a feeling of humanity uh, in bread with the culture. Got it. Well said. Anyway, okay. I'm just saying that the Chinese uh, really do, and I think they're more dangerous than the Russians, frankly. I think the Russians is basically oh, very a, 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 a corrupt yeah. society. Yeah. I think it's it's an alcoholic society. It's got um, you know some very very superficial uh, you know religious values. Uh, the Chinese uh, is largely a materialistic, atheistic, uh, a predator mentality. And boy, I will tell you, they are planning on taking the world, and they're planning on taking the Russians down. In this war, they're temporary allies for World War III. But I think China will uh, stab Russia in the back and make sure that Russia gets eliminated. And then it will be the globalists versus the Chinese after World War III. Mm -hmm. And the globalists want that because then you've got a new Cold War enemy. And you can justify keeping this great militarized global army and not giving back individual national sovereignty. Now... I realize what I'm projecting is something a lot of people have never heard of or conceived of, but if they'll remember my words, they'll see it come to pass that we will get attacked by Russia and China someday after sufficient provocations and continuing to intervene around the world and build hatred. And that's part of the globalist in there. That's part of what 9-11 was all about. It's part of what the so-called war on terror that was manufactured by the U.S. is all about. It's building hatred of the U.S. as the intervener, intervener and bully of the world. And uh, they're handing to Russia and China the excuse to take down the West uh, or to take down, you know, the yeah. U.S. government. It isn't yeah. that Americans are hated yeah. or our freedoms are hated. No, our point well taken. Is, our yeah. government is hated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, what government? Oh, God. <laughs> Well, that's, uh, that's my rant for the evening. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Hey, yeah. listen, that was great. That was wonderful. Uh, always good to hear things that uh, are at variance with whatever. Uh, they, we need new things. If people, Joel, only read and immerse themselves in things that they agree with and feel comfortable with, where's the growth? There's no growth. You can't grow. You need to hear yeah. things that, that make you think that you don't like necessarily, that's fine. Analyze it. Ask yourself, well, what about that that Jeff just said or, or Joel just said that I don't like? What, what was it about that? You've got to do that. That's called thinking and then doing your own analysis of your thought and synthesis of the results and coming up with something. And watch yourself grow and, and wise up. You will. You will. Well, that's one of my purposes in the World Affairs Brief every week is that I challenge the establishment thinking. I even debunk a lot of the false conspiracy theories. Oh, thank goodness, yeah. The Internet is just full of bogus claims and things. It's full of bogus people. <laughs> yeah. It's very difficult for you know sincere conservatives and libertarians to get at the truth uh, because there is so much uh, junk being par paraded out there. So analysis, even though it's controversial, is important because, as you say, it makes us think. Yeah. Well, that's what that's what our job is. That's what journalists are supposed to really do. Uh, what What do we have now? Oh man. Yeah. It's parroting the government just line. Disgusting. Yeah. All right. Let's look at the uh, the merry-go-round to hell uh, for 2016. Uh, Hillary continues to uh, be given a pass. Uh, she's not being held accountable to. Anyone for anything, as far as I can tell. Uh, Jebby is uh, hoping to buy his way into respect. Well, hate to use the word respectability. Buying his way into poll prominence. Uh, I don't know. I don't know where it's going to go. I think the big battle, of course, is, and I think we mentioned this last time, is who will end up in the number two slot? Well, you're right about the propaganda for Hillary. There's a story in The Guardian about how a joint NBC and Wall Street Journal poll says that not only will Hillary win the Democratic administration, which I have no doubt, uh, but she'll transfer Republican opponents. And that poll is simply at variance with every other honest poll I've seen. Uh, 